<clears throat> Are we live yet? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the live stream. Today, uh, we're going to attempt to melt some copper. Oh, why do I have this? lost medicator chip? Oh, oh. I don't know what's going on there. Hold on a second. We got technical difficulties. <laughs> um, why am I on the screen? Okay. Oh, here we go. So, um, who, who we got in here today? What's up, Silverlicious John? Mr. Land? Bill, <laughs> so um, as you guys know, I think I unveiled this in the last live stream. Someone sent me a, um, a little smelter thing and uh, some other things and this shirt. See that? Thank you for that. Um, and I, I haven't been able to do nothing with it, but I figured, um, we get on here and live and try to, um, melt some copper. Now I pretty much thought I had everything I was going to need to do this. Um, and I think the only thing I'm missing is some borax, but I don't even know if you actually need that. I don't, I mean, we're just going to try to melt it. We're not trying to purify it and make it like super refined. Um, let me know if that's something that needs to be, um, that you're actually supposed to have. Uh, I, I had a box around here forever, but, um, I don't know what happened to it. Oh, I see. We got a uh, nice junk in the, uh, let me see if I can add this guy. Hey, what's up, dude? Hey, Derek, how's it going? Pretty good, man. Oh, let me turn this down a little bit. Hey, man, I seen that. Are you the guy that you're the one that had that big stator from that generator? Yeah, I got nine thousand. Make any progress on that thing yet? Oh yeah, yeah. I had a hell of a hard time dragging the um, armature out, and uh, I yanked and yanked and yanked on with the truck, and ended up ended up being a spring clip hidden behind a bonus motor. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Hey, but bonus motors are freaking awesome, right? Yeah. Yeah, so um, all those stators from the generators that I've come across, they were all copper with copper rotors in them. Right. Um, that big motor I just did, uh, that was kind of a disappointment. But here, um, private chat. Oh, that's you. Okay. So, like, the ones that, like, this armature, they're four and a half inches thick, the copper in them. The copper? Yeah. There's how four you, How you plan on pulling that out? Well, the, the, it looks like it's all unbolting, so. Really? Yeah. How are you going to, um, do you think you're going to have to cook it? No, um, actually, I watched a video from Scrap It All. And I showed him my, these pictures, and he thinks I can push those little plastic spacers out, and that it should pop right out. But really? we'll see. Yeah. Wow. We'll good see. luck, man. It looks like a uh, a, a serious endeavor there. <laughs> it sure is, especially with limited to next to nothing for tools, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, you got to improvise though. Whether there's a will, there's a way, man. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> so. so. Um, let's see who else we got in the chat over here. Super Rashad. Hello from Denmark. What's up, man? Double Dutch digger. <laughs> What's up from the Netherlands? That's crazy. Hello from Wales. Jake Evans. Scrap. Scrap it all. What's up, E? From SA Recycling, Silverlicious, Harry from Holland. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, 
All right, so I'm going to – um, I want to get this thing. I haven't even done nothing with this thing yet. Um, let me see if I can make this bigger. I don't know how this is going to work. Whoops. Maybe I need to remove myself. Well, you should be – oh, there you are. Yeah, there we go. So there I'm not going to melt guys. that big – thing right there i just had that in there for a thumbnail what i plan on doing is melting i actually want to melt two things um i want to melt some bright and shiny see that wow <laughs> that thing's heavy and then you had some of that number two, I guess I could use this camera. Nice. From um, from pulling out that that copper, I kind of just want to see like what the difference. You know, I don't have any borax um, or anything to really clean it, but this is uh, This is what they sent me. Okay. It's got this little baby crucible. And some instructions. Toss those away. Yeah, we don't need that where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> now I have a... Uh, they come with a brick and someone mentioned uh, putting cardboard down there. So I do have some cardboard here. Um, and then this is the adapter for the propane. I went and got new propane yesterday. Now, that wasn't cheap, man. That was like almost $28 or something. But I did get it from a gas station right around the corner here from the shop. Um, I still want to um, experiment with the electric kiln because I found a video. Can you guys hear me? Is the audio okay? Yeah, no, it's fantastic, Derek. Okay. Uh, I found a video of a guy that had an electric kiln. He, was, he couldn't get it up to temperature to melt copper, so he found different coils there's a whole nother um style or a, a metal makeup of a coil that you can use to bring the temperature up even higher and he was actually able to melt some uh copper with it which was pretty cool because i don't want to be spending a lot of gas you know money on gas to melt anything really if i can use the electric here in this ridiculously priced shop i have so this is everything this kit came with. It came with a little crucible, some really crude tongs, some gloves that looked kind of like they weren't going to fit. But when I put my hand in here, they actually fit like better than my Lincoln welding gloves. They just look like a pair of welding gloves. Um, this is the burner. Okay. Got this little adjustment here. I'm not sure how any of this is going to work. Hopefully, we don't blow ourselves up here live. On well, mate, that'd be good for good TV, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, I did have the only thing I could find is like a spoon. Maybe I can, you know, pull the slag off the top. Um, and like I said, I thought I had a box of borax around here somewhere, but I looked and I probably threw it out or something happened. It's, it's just not here. We don't want no gas leaks. I did get some spacers from my kit that came with my kiln. So when I'm burning this, I can kind of put these up here and we'll preheat the mold like that, I guess. I think that'll suffice. Um, now, so Patrick Swager just gave you a fifty dollar tip, my friend. What's that? Patrick Swager just gave you a fifty dollar tip. No shit. That's awesome. Hey, thanks a lot, Patrick. 
I really appreciate that, man. Who else we got in here? Why don't you ask Big Stack D? Yeah, I'm subscribed to that guy. I watch him all the time. Um, I don't know. He's got a big channel. I don't know if he'd come on here and help me. <laughs> he seems like a cool dude, dude. I, I watch his channel all the time. Yeah, I'm subbed the most. I mean, if there's a scrapping channel out there, I'm pretty much subbed to it. Now, I don't always have time to watch everybody's stuff, but I'll, I'll scroll through it all and uh, see what everybody's got going on. I don't know. Uh, well, Adam Luke just gave you 10 bucks. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Adam? Man, there's a lot of people in the chat today. Um, so uh, the company that sent this thing to me, Tao Auto, um, made in China. But, you know, hey, if someone's going to send me something uh, and I don't have to pay for it, I, I really don't care where it comes from. But I'm going to give you my, I don't care if you send it to me or you pay me to do a review or whatever. I'm going to give you my honest review. And um, what I think about it now, being that this is my first little kiln or furnace, melting furnace, I really got nothing to compare it to. Um, it seems like just an entry level thing. And we're going to find out here in a minute if it's actually going to uh, do the thing. Now, I don't know how loud this is going to be. I might. We're going to get it fired up and see what it sounds like. And then uh, I might move it over away from the, the camera and the mic a little bit. I don't know. Because um, I don't know how long this is going to take. So this is my first time. I'm going to open this valve and, and just see if. Uh... So James was saying that uh, Ajax, Comet, that kind of stuff all have borax in them. Ajax? Yeah. I don't know. Would, the, would there be any other contaminants that could screw you up? Well, for the, the bright and shiny one, I don't think there's going to be much in there. No. Um, but this, the number two, which has all that shellac and that coating on it, that's why I wanted to do two different melts and see. First, we're going to do the clean stuff, um, and then we're going to melt this and see what they come out with. And then... Even though this is a small thing, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it in this video, but I'm going to take this, whatever I melt, and I'm going to put it over there on my milling machine, and we're going to mill this into a nice, perfect thing, and uh, I want to make something with it. And then I'll probably give it away to someone. So um, in the future, as long as this goes right, I'm going to melt it, and within the same video, we're going to put it on the milling machine and make something with it live, and then I'll give it away. Um, so this thing seems to be working. I can hear some gas. Okay. Ooh. Smells. We don't want to get a gas build up and blow something up. Uh, I do have my torch. I don't know if I should have this open or closed. Maybe we should read those instructions. What do you guys think? Anyone uh, in the I comments? Say roll the dice. Huh? I say roll the dice, but. Just light it? <laughs> Just See this light thing it back here? Should I but open I'm, that? But I'm safe. I'm on the other side of the world, so. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, where, where are you coming? Where are you at, um, nice junk? Lethbridge, Alberta. Al Alberta? Yeah, Canada. No, Canada, okay. That's what I love about the internet, man. We get to connect with people from all over the place. I'm an hour from Montana. Sweet. I don't know. Uh, I'm originally from New Jersey, so I kind of grew up in the cold, but I don't want anything to do with the cold anymore. And as you can see today, <laughs> I'm actually, for the first time, you know, probably once or twice a year, I wear pants. I put pants on today because I'm mountain copper. Man, I couldn't find a decent pair of uh, safety glasses. This one has orange overspray on it. 
we're going to have to use these. All right, I'm just going to leave this thing closed uh, so all the gas comes out this way. Maybe I'll crack it a little bit. I don't know. Well, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, it's got a flame. Whoa. We crank it up? Sure. <laughs> Well, that sounded right. So, is there an air fuel mixture thingy on there? What's that? Is there air fuel uh, setting? Yeah, right there? here, right here at the end. Maybe play with that because I don't think it's supposed to be like a a campfire. Yeah, I know, man. We're not getting uh, that turbo effect, and I smell woo. I smell propane. All right. Just let me know and I can call 911 for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to turn this off for a second. <laughs> this is wide open. This is, this is wide open. We're not getting our, our turbine. I wonder if I should blow in there with an air blower. Oh, yeah. What could possibly happen? So, HH Recycling is saying uh, that's fresh ceramic wool in there you might want to put on your respirator. It's a good idea. I got my respirator right here. Safety All right, theory. we're just going to take a look at this instructions real quick. They gave us... Uh, now, if you guys watch when I uh, took out the, um, the <laughs> what the hell was that thing? The plasma cutter that they sent me, the instructions were absolutely ridiculous for that thing. Um, were they in English? Yeah, but the way it was worded, just reading it gave me <laughs> like a seizure, bro. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. Uh Let's see. I need starting instructions. I wonder if uh, this thing kind of turned. I wonder if these, if this has jets in it that are facing a certain direction. Let me just see. I, I probably should have prepared a little bit more for this. Um, let me. Uh, okay, so here I see you need to open the air fuel mixture thingy. Almost fully open after you light it. Before or after? This thing back here? After you light it, yeah. So start it with that closed and then open it? Yeah. Let's see if that's, I get this camera closer. That's what Scrap It All is saying anyways. And I think he has one. Or his dad's got one or something. So he might so know. start it shut. And then, you know right. what? The thing is, I don't know if this, when I tighten this, this thing moved. So it's kind of. Yeah, start it with barely wonder. open. Huh? He says start it barely open. Right. But this cool. thing here is rotating. So I'm wondering if. Yeah. So let's see if this camera, it has a jet in there or a hole it might not have been facing the right way oh so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna find a because when i tighten that up this thing spun so i'm gonna find a uh, sharpie real quick so that i can reference um the direction of that thing So okay. while Derek's gone, oh, there he is. Yeah, I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna tighten all this stuff up with wrench set of hand tight. See, um, another person says that Big Stack opens it after it's lit. 
open open it after it's lit yeah so this is our and now we at least have it facing towards the right direction we might have had the gas blowing out this way <laughs> oh maybe that's why you're getting all that smell which is you know what's crazy is there's really no way to reference this thing being in the middle huh we're just going to uh put it in and crank it down a little bit i need a pair of pliers to hold this okay Oh, and I have something else I want to show you. I already showed you guys in the, in the video, but uh, I probably should have put some Teflon tape on this. That's only if you don't want leaks. Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> we already got an issue. <laughs> so this came with a a nut and just i didn't barely put any pressure and it cracked i don't know if you can see that but it okay. cracked the end of the freaking nut open so which it doesn't really matter because the, the hole doesn't go all the way through i think that's there just to kind of hold that on we're just going to make sure that we're facing the right direction now okay I'm now I'm afraid to tighten anything up. <laughs> I barely put any pressure on that in a crack. So already how all the propane melting furnace, you got uh, one strike against you. Don't send Whoa. me some shit and uh you know think I'm gonna sugarcoat it. I'm gonna so tell Steve, you it's garbage. <laughs> so Steve just sent you ten bucks too. Hey man, I appreciate it, Steve. Well, that was the leak. Yeah, we already found a weak link. Um, just want to make sure that this is tight. Okay. Oh, hey, you know what? There's another issue. So where this is coming through, the insulation was halfway covering the hole. All right. Oh, now that I got a marker and. So hey guys, guys you got to put some uh, cardboard in there. We're going to cut some cardboard out. If we get it running. Um, that's what I'm looking for, the PSI. Let's see what... Um, open the gas valve and adjust the regulator to 10 PSI. Okay. This is saying screw the inlet valve on the burner to the maximum opening use and igniter or torch to light the furnace. Adjust the propane regulator to 15 PSI to dry and preheat the crucible for three to five minutes. Uh, follow crucible guidelines. Okay. So we need to start at 10 with this wide open. Now this is there. Can y'all see that? Is that coming through? Yeah. That's their guidelines. Saying open that thing up all the way. All right, let's try this again. This knob over here is kind of sketch. Feels like she's a little wobbly. Yeah, I don't know, man. This whole setup seems kind of sketch. <laughs> well, that's kind of your channel, isn't it? There we go. 
we have ignition. And Derek yeah. Do y'all see that? I don't know if that's coming through, but not he's burning. Oh, you know what? I forgot to put the bricks down in there. Yeah, I seen a little bit of blue flame there. That's pretty cool. Um. Oh, we just went out. We got to crank it up to 15 now. Um, shit, man. Forgot to put my, my block in there. Okay. Well, at least you didn't use like a wooden picnic table. We got our cardboard. Seems like we're getting um some some intermittent stuff going on here. I'm gonna let this thing heat up. I think it said uh did it say preheat this thing as well? Are we supposed to preheat this? Oh I don't know. Probably should put my respirator on. All oh, right. We forgot about that. <laughs> I want to burn off all this stuff that's on here. Oh, now that sounds cool, man. Yeah, we're not getting the turbo effect uh, through the camera. Huh? We're not Are getting the turbo. You're not hearing that? No. Let me see how far I get my mic. You hear that? Yeah, a little bit. It's probably probably blowing out the mic there. Now I do have across. I got a fan blowing across here, and there's even though it's on low, it's sucking this stuff right out of the building. So, so Maiden Holland, Maiden Holland says you don't have to preheat that crucible, but you have no, to just fill it with mold. copper and send it. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Um. I just want to see one thing here. Oh, I don't know if this thing's going to get hot enough to melt copper. They're only showing like aluminum in here. Don't melt the copper. We're going to have to soup it up a little bit. Well, that sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. I have those on that baby. I wish I could find my uh, my thermometer. All right, I'm gonna just let that burn for a second while I prep the copper. Oh, let me see if um anyone else wanted to join the stream. I got to check my. Uh, Um, okay, I think we're all in here. Hey, guys, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Yeah, um, I don't have any borax for the guy asking about the borax. I thought I had some. We're just going to melt this stuff and see how it goes. And, um, the copper is going to stick. Well, that's a good tip. Don't touch melted copper. It could be hot. <laughs> um, it takes a half hour to an hour to melt copper? No shit. Watch the CO level in the shop. So I have... Uh, my shop door is cracked over there, and I have a fan blowing air in. 
and I have a fan behind me sucking air out and I have another fan over here. So there's plenty of flow going. Like I can feel the air coming right by me. So we shouldn't have any type of, uh, this isn't nothing compared to when I burnt that stator in here. <laughs> if you guys seen that video, that was some serious flames. Um, so this is nothing. Let me, uh, man, this thing is, is looking nice in there. Look at that. Oh, you can't see the uh, orange. I don't know why the camera's not showing the orange. Hey, oh, big country. We're getting a weird sound. Oh! Ooh, that's cool. It sounds like you're uh, in a submersible. I wonder if that's gas building up in that... Wow, that was that was, that was crazy. It, it sounded like there was some type of um, almost like a pulse jet engine type situation going on. All right, so I wanted to kind of just heat that up and burn, you know, everything in there real quick. We'll take a look. Oh yeah, that's right. Big country. He uh, he turns around. He melts them um, in one of his channels. That's so the makes... sound before the explosion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I maybe I should put my. Uh, I do have my 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 fireman's hat over here just in case. I, I should probably wear it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cut up some of this copper into smaller bits. Um, if I can find my cutters. That was crazy. I wonder what that, um, that pipe got really hot too. Sweet. I feel like it was, it was, uh, burning inside that pipe. Oh, sucking back. Like a backdraft or something. We're not going to melt that crusty copper. Yeah, this is more of a process than I thought. Um, just, just handling this now, trying to get this small enough to get in that crucible. I want to, uh, start chopping this copper through the granulator. That would make it so much easier to fill that crucible. Have you, uh, figured out a system to put the magnet through that while it's running? To the what? The granulator, because you last time you had a whole bunch of iron in the granulator. Oh, you know, that was the, the, that was old chops from the last time I ran that machine. And the iron came from wire nuts. So wire oh. nuts have like a spring in them. And I was just throwing everything in there. I wasn't clipping them in, and prepping it. Um, and then I just, I was just using a hose and the water sluice. Um, and I, I remember thinking to myself, I should put the magnet in there. And then I just forgot or didn't or whatever happened. Um, okay. And then you got boned on price. Huh? And then you got boned on price. Yeah. Well, they didn't even... So they haven't bought chops down there from anybody other than me, like probably forever. They don't really buy um, chops. But this new guy that I was talking to, SA Recycling, he said they got a chopping plant right there in Pompano. 
which is interesting because I didn't know any other people than uh, there was one guy up here in West Palm that's chop. He's got a chopper. Um, I didn't know anyone else that was actually chopping copper in South Florida. Because I remember the first time when I was doing that, it was hard to find a place that would actually buy the chops. Really? Yeah, I tried locally first. And then, you know, I wound up selling it down there in Miami. And they were buying it for a while, but they weren't giving me a good price on it. You know, like it was its own category. So even though I was chopping bright and shiny wire, I wasn't getting a bright and shiny price for it. So. Right. Maybe that was just through them. I don't know if another place would have given, you know, someone else. Or, I don't know. I, I only dealt with it for a little while. I was selling some of the chops to a guy. Kind of like there's a dude, Boca Mint. He's always asking me for chops. I guess he does a lot of melting. Um, but I was selling it to a guy. He was He was paying bright and shiny price for it. But he only wanted so much of it. And I was chopping a lot. Like, I had an incredible setup. I had that machine over there, you know, my, my, my stripping setup. Right. Then I had my homemade wire stripper, which I think I only had on the channel one or two times before I completely took it apart. Um. And then I had my granulator. I had them all set up right next to each other. So I would get a mound of copper and I would just start feeding it through all three machines at the same time. And I had a guy, the dude that was working for me at the time, he would prep. And this guy was really good at prepping wire, like untangling it and stretching it out just so I can run it. And the amount of copper we went through in an hour was incredible because all the and we stripped hundred percent of everything. All the uh, spaghetti wire, I would be feeding the granulator as fast as I could, and then stripping all the big stuff. And then the homemade wire stripper, I was stripping nothing but solid core through. And then once all the big wire ran out, I would dial both the strippers down to the small stuff, and we would just keep stripping everything. I'd be feeding spaghetti through the two strippers. And the granulator while the granulator was recovering, so you, you can't feed it as fast as you, you know, at least the one I had, you couldn't just constantly feed it, you had to let it clear itself out, right? Um, so while it was doing that, I was still running the other machines. Um, and then it literally you would make a pile of copper disappear in minutes, man. It was really incredible. Um, that was before I had you. I wish. I wish I would have started a YouTube in the shop I had when I built that granulator and water sluice because that was, I was doing a lot of really cool stuff in there that never got filmed. And even the, the videos that you see of the water sluice that are on my channel, I filmed them with my phone before I even had a YouTube channel and I had no idea why I was even filming. I just thought it was cool. I make a video. Um, I didn't have a YouTube channel. But luckily, I actually had that video. What was cool was the trial and error that I went through with the water sluice. Because the first time I sold chops, huh, I didn't know that there was a difference between number one copper and number two, like the tin coated copper. I was literally throwing everything into the uh, shredder. Um, I guess I should get this started up first. I don't know. Uh, if we're going to have problems with that noise again. There goes the cardboard. Sweet. I guess I should put off the gloves. And don't forget your mask. Oh, uh, don't forget my mask. Not that I believe in masks. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, but the cardboard is almost gone. 
Imagine that. <laughs> Carport didn't last. All right. Well, we don't hear it, so sounds good. Can you you can't hear it? No. It's actually kind of quiet. I don't know. Is the air all the way on? Uh oh. Oh! Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> it like went out for a second and then blew it. It literally blew the top off. That was kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's hope for a major explosion yet. All right. There's some serious heat coming out of there. I can see the little strands starting to get red hot. Oh, cool. So maybe it'll take 30 minutes. Let me, uh, let me get on here and. Say what's up to everybody while that's cooking. Oh. Man, I almost, I was running around. I was late, man. I almost missed my own stream today. <laughs> well, me and the wife were out having breakfast when I got your email. And I'm like, Jesus, we got to get going. Oh, yeah. Well, I wanted to, usually I do it late at night when I have time to prepare. And I'm not so rushed. Let me see if um, um, I'm going to try and do something here. Whoops. There we go. Uh, yeah, usually I try to do it late at night when I have time to prepare. Because, man, my, my days and everything I do is kind of hectic. Oh, it's making a weird noise. Can you hear that on the mic? Oh, yeah. Maybe you should put on your welding oh, jacket. Oh, it went out. Maybe you should put on your welding jacket. Man, is it that much of a concern? <laughs> you never know. It went out. We got, we got something going on here. Oh. <laughs> this Chinese thing is going to be the death of me. <laughs> 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 Holy I love shit. It. Hey, there's like white shrapnel all over the place now. I'm glad I'm not the only one on YouTube that's not safe. Yeah, I might have to put my helmet on. Oh, it went out again. Probably should have read the instructions a little better. This thing is dangerous, man. Maybe the problem is you already read a little bit of the instructions. You shouldn't have read them at all. Oh, look at this. Oh, you know what? Man, we're getting a leak. Oh. Uh, at this connection right here. Well, that's good. You didn't uh, tighten up everything when you got it. I think I think it heated up. I don't think I I don't know if Teflon tape would uh probably not would last if I put it in there with this heat. Where's my uh? So big country says you need to open your choke up more. Pull the open choke. Open this up the more. Choke. Yeah. All right, let's try this again. Woo! <laughs> oh, there's that sound again. What is that? Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> that was excellent. Do not do this at home. Yeah. I have that all the way open. Is 
definitely a lot louder now. Well, we can actually hear it now. Oh, look, there's smoke coming off of this thing. Well, I've, maybe it's burning off the new ship. Huh? It's probably burning off the new ship. Yeah. So, Big Country says loud is good. And I know he melts a lot of shit, so. He says what's good? Loud is good? Yeah, loud can you hear that good. now? Is it a lot louder? So, I have my mic. My I got settings on my mic for directional. I'll just turn it away so it's not kind of overpowering. Can you still hear that? Yeah. Is it loud? It's not too too bad. Okay. I don't want to I don't want to make the stream um annoying. Oh no, no, it's not anywhere near annoying. Do I see a vortex in the furnace? That's what Check you should the do. uh flame on the inside and make sure it's blue. I'm gonna put my uh putting some safety gear on for this. Yeah. Because that, <laughs> that beard will burn up in that furnace, eh? I can smell paint burning now. I honestly can't see anything in there. Check that connection. Perfect. I'm going to turn out some lights real quick. I don't see a blue flame, but there is a, a vortex going on in there. Okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing a bright blue frame, uh, flame. But, you know, if you look at Oki, his stuff's always like a vortex, like big bright yellow light. Yeah. But, I mean, look at the source of where this uh, thing came from. You know what I'm saying? I'm not expecting it to be the top of the line shit here. Oh, come on now. But if it, if it, at least as long as it melts the copper, I'd be okay with it. But look what's happening here. I wonder if we got flame. This, the paint is literally melting off this thing. So Big Country is saying have your propane regulator at 1.2. I don't know what that means. I'm going to put that... the lid back on and see what happens. The copper's getting hot. Is it getting hot? I'll put the lid back on keep the heat in. The end of that thing that's sticking in there is glowing right now. Oh, 1.2 MPA. <laughs> this thing is changing colors like crazy. So you probably shouldn't touch it. Seems to be doing something. So you said you had a viewer send that to you? Uh, no, a company. So I get emails all the time from people. And a lot of times it's like weird stuff that has no bearing on my channel. And, and the email is always like, oh, we love your content and we'd like to send you this thing. I'm like, where on my channel have you seen me use anything within the realm of that? Right. You know, so it's like. Most of the time, I just ignore it. But if someone's going to send me a tool 
I got a hard time not accepting that. You know what I'm saying? I'm a toolholic, man. You're not going to say, hey, we're going to send you something for free. Yeah. You know? So a lot. And here's another thing. A lot of them want you to sign all this stuff saying, oh, you'll do a video and you're, you know what I'm saying? All this crazy stuff. Um, I always email them back. Yeah, I'm not interested. Right. And then they're like, oh, why? You know, and I'm like, because what if I don't like your thing? What if it's a piece of shit? I'm not going to sit here and tell my viewers that, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. Go out and get it. No, man. You know, if you send me something, I'm going to give you my honest review. So, so far, I don't know about it. I'm on the fence about this. We haven't gotten through it yet. It's done some weird things. And right. the quality of the parts is suspect already. So, right. Uh, but I get what you're saying because I get those emails too. And I just, I'm not selling out for you guys. Right. And yeah. like the plasma cutter, the guy keeps emailing me about the plasma cutter. I'm like, yo, dude, I, I'll make a video when I get to it. That's what I told you before you sent it to me. Right. You know, I'm not, you're, I'm not on your time. I'll do it when I feel like it. And I have a project, a project that, it's going to be worth me making a video with it, you know? You and, can always scrap it for him online. And a lot of times, like, <laughs> I want to I want to work. I want to work it a couple times before I even put it on air. Because if I if I use it one time and it works great, and I say, oh, this thing's nice. And then I go to use it another time, and then it just doesn't work or it fouls. Or, mm -hmm. Then it's like, what? You, it's like a Harbor Freight tool. You might get one or good uses out of it. Now, now Harbor Freight's gotten better with their shit, but I remember back in the day I bought something from there that like I didn't even get it out of the box and it broke. You're right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you got to be careful with certain things, man. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know what? At least if this thing doesn't work, you can throw it in the shred. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope it does something. It. It. it uh. It's. It, I mean, it's doing something. I don't know. If it's going to melt that copper or not. It's like getting red. I don't know. Maybe I should crank it up a little bit. What do uh, everybody that melts copper, what do you normally run the regulator? They're saying 15 PSI. Well, and like uh, these other guys have been saying 1.2 MPA, whatever the hell that is. What's that? 1.2 MPA. I don't know what that is, but you should preheat your crucibles for over an hour. Well, too late for that. Well, I better get it on there then. I don't know if this is going to affect the flow. We'll just let it cook. <laughs> I do have a little oven in my office I could uh, heat the stuff up with. You know, you could put your dinner on top. Certified Chinese, Chinese-ism? Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up, Shannon? Yeah, thanks for the shirt. Shannon's in the comments. She sent me this. Sorry, I'm already getting it dirty, but I mean... You got to expect that over here. <laughs> I'm really bad with shirts. I'll I'll have like a brand new shirt on, right? And I'll come to the shop for something just to stop by or I'm not expecting to work. And next thing I know, I got a hole in the damn thing somewhere. Usually right around my fat gut because I'm always grinding it up against stuff. <laughs> the first burn is always the hardest. Got to break it in. And work the kinks and get it dialed. I don't know how much we can dial this Chinese thing in, but we'll try. <laughs> I have a great, um, so the incinerator that I have out there, I haven't gotten any um, any calls or no, not even a, a question about it. And I kind of figured that because it's a really rare item. You know, in the 13 or 14 years I've been scrapping, I've never come across one. Right. You know? So, um even though it's crazy, they're, they're like $37,000 and that one's only six years old and it works. They just got a new one because I forget what he said. He replaced something on it and he goes, ah, we don't want to do maintenance. This is the Boca airport, all the rich people, you know, they got money to burn, you know? 
Right. Um, so what I'm thinking is I disassemble it. It has big steel like drums in there for the burner. And then it has an afterburner like a, a scrubber to scrub the fumes. So I think what I could do is take the bricks out and repurpose it and, and instead of horizontal, flip it vertical. And then it has these badass Beckon oil burners, man. Right. I think I can repurpose them and uh, use two burners in it. And re- instead of having one, really heat it up. And uh, I want to use waste oil. I know a lot of people said that you can't use waste oil to melt copper. But I seen a video. This dude built a custom burner. And it's badass. And he's using, he's using uh, oil. And air, like pressurized air with an air compressor. But right. there's something that I want to do that I think will kick it up even a notch. I want to pressurize the oil and have it spray like an injector. You know, you got to atomize it. Um, you know, I'm kind of an old school pyro. I like burning shit, you know. So I, right. if you atomize stuff and get a good air mixture in there, you'll get a better burn, you know. Plus, with compressed air, or just them Beckon burners have a, a squirrel fan on them to, to blow oxygen oh, okay. like around uh, the thing. I, I don't know what those are rated for. I, I could have swore I, I saw in all the manual that it was only it would only get up to a thousand degrees, but I think we can we can double that with some modifications, you know. Uh, but they are oil burners, so I don't think it's going to be a far stretch switching from diesel fuel to waste oil, which in my shop over here, I'm surrounded by mechanics, and they yeah. pay to get rid of the oil. So I have like an endless supply of oil. Yeah. Uh, let's see what we got over here. Have your regulator on a tank at 1.2. Um this is this is in PSI. It, it says start it at ten and crank it to fifteen. I'm gonna go turn this other fan on a little higher. I can kind of start smelling something. Even though I got like a breeze coming across me. Look how white that thing is getting. Let me let me make Holy that. Holy jeez. Let me uh see if I can make that bigger. Oops. I don't know how. Oh, that's there you go. Wow. Look how, look how white that thing got. Hold on. Jeez, that's probably not a good thing, eh? Wonder if my fire is burning inside that tube. There is an orange glow inside there. Oh well, okay. We'll let it burn for a couple minutes, and then uh, we'll check it out. We'll just have it to sounds, keep it, it sounds cool. I think you just have to keep an eye out, make sure that white doesn't reach the hose. Well, it the hose is actually off to the side a little bit, but yeah, let me check that again. Last time I did that, there was fire coming out of that connection. <laughs> I probably should have checked the connect in the, in that book. It does say check the connection. Um, check the connection at the uh, regulator with soapy water. So that's not ice that you're scraping off, is it? What's that? That's not ice you're scraping off, is it? No, oh, man, wait. that's burnt paint. Oh, okay. You mean like ice, like when propane freezes stuff yeah. up? Yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's definitely burnt paint. Okay. 
This this thing here is getting super hot. See, this is just showing um, this is showing aluminum, so I don't even know if this thing will melt copper. So does that piece of crap have a thermometer on it or anything to tell you what the temperature is? No, inside? and I, I have a digital thing somewhere around here. Let me Let me see if I can find it real quick. Put some new batteries in this thing. Hopefully this thing still works. Haha. Uh -huh. We're on Celsius. No problem, Scott. So, uh, what's your air mixture like? Uh, what's that? Do you have the air all the way on, or this is all the way open? Okay. So maybe a little bit less propane. I don't know. They're saying that the tube, the fire shouldn't be in the tube. <clears throat> Things getting some weird readings. I don't think this is going to go up high enough. Uh, this is only rated for minus 58 to 626 degrees. So we're not even, we're way above the capacity of this. It's maxing it out right there on that tube. Let's see what we got in the comments over here. Any higher than 1.2 will melt your hose. Do I have a propane torch for heating the mold? Yeah, I got this thing right here. <laughs> but it's cooking on there. I don't know how much more I need to eat it. Oh, there's flame. There's blue flame coming out of it now. Sweet. Let me see if I can shut off some more lights. <clears throat> you sure can hear the the turbo going on oh that's a good thing to know you Brian see fire coming out of that thing now yeah so this Brian guy says the flame will start burning green when it's melting. Yeah, it's cooking up now. It's literally, the flames are literally coming out around the crucible. How do I make this bigger, man? Hold on, I'm going to... Uh... I don't know why it won't let me change this. There we go. Can you see the fire? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah.
Just a little bit you can see, but that's cool. Oh, yeah. That's really good. Hope it don't melt my camera. <laughs> well, you're using, it's your 10, right? Huh? It's your 10? Is it your GoPro 10? Oh, no. That's a, um, this is my, I got this for live streams. Oh. It's just a, uh, like a webcam. It's supposed to sit on top of your, I don't know how to use the GoPro for live streaming. I like to because it has a really high quality, but the damn thing gets hot. Um, but someone had mentioned in the comments that because, I shoot in 4K, like 440 something. I shoot in real high definition. Um, that's probably why my camera's getting hot. Plus, I have the boost on, and I have um, the where if you're moving it around a lot, it smooths it out. Right. Like when I used to film with my iPhone and I'd be moving all over the place, it would get um, it would get like really people were complaining they were getting seasick oh. and um the the gopro just takes all that out it's really amazing but i have so many problems with them um shutting off in the middle like they some the, the thing that's been happening with it now is it's not even getting hot the battery's not dying i'll be recording and it's good that it beeps and lets you know when it stops but it'll just in the middle of recording it just shuts off. It, it, it not shut off. It just stops recording and then just goes back to the screen, and then you gotta reset it. So it's like, um, it, it's a pain in the ass. And then I was using the GoPro Nine the other day, but I realized why it didn't shut off is probably because I wasn't shooting in 440 4K. It was only shooting like 1080i. Oh. Throw an engine block and melt some aluminum. So I plan on being able to do something like that. Um, what else we got in here? I wouldn't sign anything. Yeah, I, I, I ain't signing nothing. Oil burner has several videos on how to pressurize, how to, um, I don't know. Yeah. So what I plan on doing is either, I think the easiest way is I want to make an air compressor reservoir, uh, using an air compressor tank. Cause I can crank it up to 150 PSI. And then instead of running it through a pump, I can just use air. Is the PSI too low, allowing the flame to come back in the tube? I think I have it at 15. We'll crank it up a little bit. I wonder if having that crucible on top of there is um, creating like a, a back pressure. This thing here looks like it's getting red hot. But isn't it? It's meant to have a crucible in there. On top of it? Oh, on top of it. I see what you're I, saying. Oh, I meant the mold. I'm sorry. No. I got to get my terminology right. <laughs> Cranked it up to about 18 PSI now. <laughs> I don't know how much of a difference that's going to make. Welcome. How did me and Steve you? like the cookies? Yeah, they were great. Steve went right for them. <laughs> I ate them for a couple days, actually. Yeah, now that I turned that up, that fan on high back there, I can't smell nothing right here. It's actually downwind of me, so it's sucking any fumes out the out the building over there. 
Some big country said the molds on top have nothing to do with airflow. It just removes moisture. Fire, fire is not beard friendly. Yeah. I should put my my uh my fire jacket on. I'm hot though, man. I'm in South Florida. I don't know what the temperature is, but it's freaking hot and I'm wearing pants, which is really rare. <laughs> The fire's in that tube. That's what I'm thinking so. Uh, we need 1,187 degrees Celsius to melt copper. If your fire is in the tube, you need to open the airflow. The airflow is open all the way. I don't know. The only thing I can do at this point is take that thing off. I wouldn't Maybe. do that. Maybe put a blower in the end of it. <laughs> Leave it up to the Chinese to use um, paint that can't handle the heat. Yeah, I don't know why they even painted that. They should have just left it. Like the very end of it looks like it was stainless or something. 2,066 degrees to melt copper. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to melt or not. We might have to switch to aluminum. Wow, can you ever hear that thing like going? You can hear it going? Yeah. It's getting cool. louder? It's cool. Is it overpowering? I, no. I can't hear. Let me see. What, it's not what overpowering at all. It just sounds it's like good. hissing coming through my... It's just a nice little eerie sound in the background, like ghosts or something. Don't burn down the shop. I should be doing this outside. Hey, man, I got to... Somewhere there's a fire extinguisher around here. And I got you a got, hose. I got a you hose. Got insurance, right? Don't worry, man. I'm a pyro, dude. I don't I don't panic when I see fire. Um I can I can handle the situation. Unless that protein uh propane tank blows up and knocks me out. <laughs> I think that mold is um I think that mold is probably hot by now. I kind of want to open that up and see what's doing on the inside. We're going to be safe about it. Let me, uh, I'm going to turn some lights back on. Hey Shannon, feel free to send me cookies too. I'm I love I love cookies. Big country says should only take 20 minutes to fully melt copper if done right. He's assuming that you're doing it right though. <laughs> This thing is warping. Oh, look at that. Wow. It looks pink through the camera. Not really melting, is it? Big Country says it's not hot enough. 
Throw some more heat at it. So, I don't know if this thing is going to get hot enough to melt copper. That copper was still stiff when I was pushing on it. It was looking like it was hot. Yeah, I don't think it's hot enough. Yeah, the copper was glowing bright red. But it didn't seem like it was it was melting. Right. I wonder if um I wonder if I blew some oxygen in there with that that propane. <laughs> Yeah, I think I need to get a blower over here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my ring? Did Shit's I start modifying this while it's burning? Shit's going to get real. Let me go ahead and put on my safety gear. You probably should be wearing that welding jacket. I'm just saying. All right, we're full throttle now. I think I'm going to get my blood. Wow. The heat got the side of my Yeti cup hot. That's crazy. if I can't funnel some air into this thing. We're going to have a ram air system going. <laughs> oh, you hear that? Oh, yeah. It kicked up. As soon as I put that air in there, man, it started sounding like it was kicking in the high gear. It's like putting a turbo on your uh, furnace. <laughs> right. I think next time you should use like a nitrous oxide bottle. Nitrous? I, I think I have a nitrous <laughs> bottle here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Use a shop vac on the exhaust. Yeah, I like that idea. I, that might be too much, though. To, it might overpower this little thing. I got two more speeds here. We can crank it up a little bit. Oh, go for it. Oh, it did. I can hear it. Make, <laughs> we're on speed two right now. We're getting some... Um, I can hear it fluttering in there, doing something weird. I don't know if we're getting a, a good smooth burn. Oh, we might be blowing out the flame. Oh. I'm going to kick it down a notch. I might have to crank up the... Um, um, I might have to crank up the, uh, the uh, propane. We're at 20 PSI. And we got forced induction going on over here. Gotta love it. (laughs) 
This might end up being the big lighter of forges, eh? You just throw it away after you're done. I'm just trying to see if they actually have... Oh, so they do have copper on the list. Oh. It has the melting point. And the maximum capacity of the crucible. Now they tell you. Oh, maybe we should be cranking this up to 30 PSI. Maybe that's our problem. We ain't got enough gas. Oh. What happened now? She's screaming now, buddy. It's screaming now. <laughs> Is that too loud? Let me turn that down a little bit. What? How bad is that on the mic? Uh, is that coming through loud? It's uh, not too, too bad. Let me turn this oh. mic down a little bit. Well, I've been married three times. I'm used to annoying noises. Huh? I've been married three times. I'm used to annoying noises. I got to plug this thing over here. All right. Wow, that's getting loud. Getting louder now? See the fire coming out of there? Yeah, it's good. It's, it's definitely, uh, you can we're definitely maxed out. Do. I'm maxed out on the regulator. I've melted copper with three pieces of charcoal and a hair dryer. Yeah, I should have had a steak out here. We could have been cooking steaks. That copper is glowing in there right now. Cool. Turn the lights off. Oh, cool. Oh, she's cooking now. Oh, that's way better. I wonder if I should put that uh, crucible back on there. How long are you supposed to heat them up for? Well, uh, what, 30 Big minutes? Said, yeah, Big Country said just to get the moisture out of them. I should start doing this from now on and make coins. Yeah, so I'll make some coins, but I actually have something way cooler in mind with the copper that I want to melt. It's something I've been wanting to do since the beginning of me recycling. I've always wanted to make a product with the copper. I can't
can't hear myself for shit. We can't hear anything, Derek. Can't hear a word. Can't hear a word. Nothing, Derek. Okay, you're back now. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this thing's funny. I actually got a uh, on the on the mic. I had to put a a zip tie to hold the cable because right out the gate, this mic wasn't cheap. And if you wiggle that wire, like if I move the mic around, it would cut out in the middle of the stream. Well, you know what they say, if you can't fix it with a hammer, it's an electrical problem. The gas, uh, so this guy's saying the gas feeder tube should protrude past the ceramic wool by a half inch to an inch. This one is flush. Matter of fact, the first time I fired up is probably why it was having those explosions. It was oh. halfway covered by the wool. So what's my plan for the copper? So I plan on making something out of copper that I could sell um, multiple things, but there's a couple key things that I want to make that um, is going to look cool, be functional. And um, I just need to melt the copper into certain shapes and then put it on a milling machine. And if I'm going to, I actually want to, not mass produced, but I want to make limited runs of these. Um, I'm going to need, I'm looking for a desktop CNC, something heavy enough. You can get cheap ones for four, five, six hundred bucks, but I'm looking for one that I can mill into some copper and possibly even some steel. Um, try sand casting. Yeah, I could do that. What I want to do is um, there's a, a 3D desktop. Um, it's a three in one printer, three, a uh, 3d printer, a, a laser engraver and a 3d router. So I want to be able to, uh, 3d print stuff and then like sand cast it or mold it and let, and let the, there's a certain stuff that you use that you can melt it away. Um, it's going to be pretty cool. And the, one, of, one of the products that I want to make will actually help people uh, scrapping. So okay. that, that'll be cool. Oh, while that's burning, I wanted to show you guys. Let me uh, see if I can make myself bigger here. Um, All right, I don't know how to make myself bigger. Yeah. Hold on a second. You had it once. I want. I want to make myself bigger. There's all these options here, but none of them work. All right. Anyway, so this is the knife that I use for hand stripping copper. And as you can see, it's bent and the tip is broke. Um, and I already showed this on the video, but uh, someone sent this to me. I don't know if he wants me to name his name, but um, this thing is extremely sharp. It's a gorgeous knife. It's a, it's a really nice fillet knife. Um, 
It's and it's it's probably sharper than I'd like to hand strip. Like this one's worn. Um, well, let me get a piece of copper. See see how well it works. Man, that thing over there is super loud. Oh, yeah, we can hear it. You can hear it now? Trying to get the mic away from it. Oh, Am I still on the mic? Well, I can still hear it. You can still hear? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be right back. So, how I like to strip short pieces. It's just by um, pulling the wire like this through a knife and just push the knife into your pant leg, which seems kind of crazy. But it strips it like butter. And then always try to go from the middle, bend it, and twist it like this, and it'll push the copper off. And the reason why I like doing the middle, say you did a really long piece, more than more than your arm span, if you pull it in the middle, when you pull it, you're pulling two at once, and you're doubling your uh, production. Man, this knife is cutting like butter. It's been a while since I hand stripped wire, so I'm probably a little rusty. Now, if you uh, if you had a long a whole bunch of long runs i put it in a vise and strip it back like this Stripping it right off the spool. <laughs> bend it and twist it. And bending and twisting it just kind of pushes the uh, wire off. You know? Now, ultimately, if you have two people and a vice, this goes a lot quicker. But 
Well, you see that? It's coming right off. So it makes it good. Got to get that little end. And how I like to um, get my pressure is I just push it flat harder into my leg to, to get the, um, the depth that it needs to penetrate, you know, the wire. You don't want to be doing that with a razor blade because, man, you could cut yourself really quick. Got one little piece there. Like I said, I haven't hand stripped wire in a long time. But um, if you do it all the time, you can get really good with that fillet knife and uh, really, you know, strip almost as fast as a wire stripper. Like you could set that spool up in a vise and just kind of walk it out and, and, and strip it. I'm right, going to check on this copper real quick. Hear the difference? Oh, yeah. How loud is it for you, Derek? Man, the heat coming off of that thing is crazy. How loud so, is it for you? Huh? huh? How loud is it for you? It's pretty loud here. I, I'm wondering how loud it is coming through here. You, we uh, can hear it, but it's not overwhelming. We can still hear yeah, it. Yeah, I, I have my mic pointed away from it. So, um, The copper, it looks like it might be ready to melt. I don't know. I'm wondering if um, I'm wondering if uh, I got too much air in there. I don't know. It's not looking good. Yeah, I don't think so. How long we've we been on here? Uh, hour and right. forty minutes. I'm probably gonna cut this off around two hours. I'm gonna. Um, I don't know if this is gonna melt. This. The wire looks like it's. It looks like it's gonna melt, man. It's, it's like glowing. Um, let me look at it again.
it's crazy how uh how bright it is in there like it looked it looked like when i put that camera in there it was just blowing it out but um the, all that copper is literally glowing looking like it's ready to melt the copper's going to melt from the bottom up um Is Steve in the outro video on the trike? No, that's uh, Chris. Uh, he was in a couple videos before he moved out of the state. <laughs> it's funny. Um, if you watch that video where he flipped that trike, I actually, there's a whole video that goes with that. He looked at me with like, like a look like, yeah, hold my beer, watch this. And then he went <laughs> to flipped it. <laughs> oh, man. And I don't know what happened to the original footage, but when I run over there and I'm laughing at him, I almost fell over. I was laughing so hard. It was hilarious. Um, the noise is the fuel air mixture being off. You're not getting the heat. Yeah, I don't think I'm getting hot enough. The ram air should not be necessary. Can you hear Can the you hear difference? <laughs> Let me turn my mic to that. Is it louder now? No, it's Man. it's quieter. Hold on. Listen to this. Yeah, that's quite a bit louder. <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn the air off and see if maybe I was just blowing out the flame. I don't know. It's a lot quieter now. Look at the flame coming out of that box. It should sound sound like a jet, yeah. The other dial needs to set right and should be enough to melt. What dial? I got that other thing cranked all the way up on 30, 30 psi. That's the max that it that it um that's the maximum that it says. I mean, why would it have, it has the types of metal, copper, aluminum, gold, silver, zinc, and tin. I don't know why it would say all that in here if it's not capable of melting it. But considering the source, <laughs> who knows what it's capable of. I, I don't know, man. It's saying that crucible, you're only going to get 15, 15 to 25 melts. Wow. Do they have that short of a lifespan? And how come, how come uh, they use those? What, what are those things made out of graphite or something? Yeah. 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 So why why wouldn't they just use steel or some type of high temp metal? Wouldn't that last longer? You would think. You would think. Well, for some for reason, some I'm reason back. Back. I wonder if that stuff contaminates the the copper. Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeding, I'm feeding back. back. Huh? I'm feeding, I'm feeding back. back, back to you. Oh, I had to turn it up a little bit. Okay, try that. I don't know. I yeah. got to figure out how to. I can't hear in my earphones what you're saying. I only hear you through my computer. And when I plug my headphones into the computer, I can't hear my mic. So I, I got to figure all that out for the next streams to make it better because I, I can't hear everything.
Steel sucks. It doesn't transfer. Okay. An old fire extinguisher. I thought they were that sounds of... cool. I actually have a fire extinguisher around here that I want to turn into a flamethrower. <laughs> but aren't fire extinguishers made out of aluminum? What's that? Aren't fire extinguishers made out of aluminum? Should I try to melt some aluminum? No, I said, aren't fire extinguishers made out of aluminum? I can't hear nothing, dude. I'm sorry. I had to, I had to turn you down because you said you were feeding back. Hold on. Yeah, I'm going to have to get my audio set up a little bit better because I can't hear with this thing going on. Right. Try this one more time. All right, I'm sorry. What was that? I said, aren't uh, fire extinguishers made out of aluminum? Oh, they might be. I can hear you much better now. But I, I can't hear myself. <laughs> the irony. <laughs> Uh, the water ones are not the solid red ones. Um, only so this guy's saying Scrapman 50 says only use that for um, aluminum and lead. Big Stack cures his crucible somehow. That's interesting. Yeah, I see him. He's got some crucibles that look like they've been through a war zone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he's still using them, so he's getting his money out of them for sure. Are my messages not going through? I don't know. Where are you sending them? I, I, I haven't been checking any messages. That flame is really nice coming out of that. Yeah, but I don't I don't think it's getting hot enough, man. I don't know. So when you were poking, was it not soft yet? It the first time it was stiff. And then someone mentioned in the comment, every time I open the lid, I'm letting the heat out. I don't know if you can see on the camera. Look, look at this. It's glowing red right there. Wow. See, you see it coming out uh, where the burner's going in? Yeah. It's getting hot. Maybe I was cooling it down with that air. I don't know. No, uh, Shannon, no, I didn't see... Uh... Uh, your email, but my email is nice junk 666 at gmail.com. Um, oh, I'm getting oh. feedback now. So, I think I'm going to check it one more time and see how it's doing. If it doesn't look like it's getting close. I'm going to let it cool down so we can look at it before I end the stream because we're coming up on two hours. I need some freaking earplugs, man. So, see if I can make that bigger. Nope, wrong one.
There you go. So it did kind of look like it was getting to that point where it was sweating. It is making some weird looking. Um... Let me get this out of there. Put some gloves on, dude. Yeah. So how much longer this is going to take? And um, I can't be on here all day, unfortunately. But at least we fire this thing up. I don't see anything molten in there. No, it looks pretty solid, eh? The freaking heat coming off of this is incredible. Wow, it's funny. The little piece of cardboard that was in the bottom is still down there burning away. Wow. I would have, it would have incinerated by now. Man, that thing is hot. It looks roasty. Look at that thing glowing. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't. Wow. Look at that. Well, you mean you melted it in the shape of a cup. Oh, a ball of copper. It ain't melting, but. Cooling down pretty fast. Not even the little tiny strands melted. So we're going to have to uh, re examine this. And um, yeah, even the little fine hairs. Wow. So there's some you rocket science that small to this shit. Would have got hot enough to melt. So uh, they're saying you now should. This looks like steel cable. <laughs> so they're saying you should put the crucible back in to melt on it uh, to uh, cool down on its own. Right. I got to turn some lights back on. He can't hear me. Drop it in some water. That's funny. <laughs> okay. So, unfortunately, the Cal Auto uh, propane furnace did not melt the copper. Now, it could be just, um, I'm not doing something right, but. I mean, I had it cranked up as hot as it would go for a while. Maybe it needs to be on there longer. I don't know. It right. seemed like that thing was burning for a while. I don't know how much gas we went through, but um, like how, how, much, how much gas do people go through? Move the propane lighter away? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll have a little aftershock going on. Um, you use a lot of copper to, or a lot of propane to melt. Yeah, I owe you one. Thanks, man. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I just I, I don't I don't see it being. Um very profitable if I were going to use propane uh, to melt copper to make the products that I want to make or make anything in general. So what I'm thinking is we're going to tinker with this a little bit more. I might um, I'm gonna actually read the book now. <laughs> but I mean, just scrolling through it, it basically just says do exactly what I was just doing, but uh, I'll try to melt some aluminum uh, just so we can get some something melted in here. Um, but maybe this thing just isn't going to get hot enough to melt copper. I don't know. Maybe. We yeah. have to adjust something that, I mean, that little tiny jet in there, 
didn't look very uh, promising when I took it out. And um, the fact that that paint melted off the thing, I'm thinking maybe I was getting fire in the tube too far. Right. Um, I, I don't know. Once I get the flame right, it'll melt in 15 minutes. Uh, okay. So the gas tube thing um, was not protruding. I'm in Alberta, Canada, Shannon. Left bridge. So... It basically stops there. And it, I mean, it might be a half inch in there. It's barely, barely in there. You pull this whole thing off. So that's as far as it's going to go. The only thing I can see if it needs to go in any further, I could cut a quarter inch or half inch off of this and let it sit in there further. Um, this is kind of warm too. Wow, that's that's like hot. Let's make sure our gas is up. Yeah, I think there might be some operator error. This regulator. 30, 30 pounds is, is, um, is all it's going to get. Um, so I don't know about this thing. It, uh, it definitely uh, needs some work or some adjustments. Um, what do we got here? Sweet Johnny Cash. I used to live. Yeah, in so I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Um, one, I'm just gonna try to to melt some aluminum as it sits, just to see if it's gonna melt anything at all. Um, and then we'll have to maybe probably tweak it a little bit. I'm not sure about, um, you know, if this is gonna do uh, anything other than aluminum or or lead, really. Um, but you know, this was the first time right out the box. I've never tried and you know, I've never melted anything other than with a cutting torch. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm not surprised that it didn't work being that, um, you know, where it came from. So, um, I should lace the crucible inside the furnace to cool it down slowly or else it might crack. Oh, place. Okay. Yeah, this kind of little airflow around here. I do have some bigger crucibles. Um which isn't going to fit in there. The flame should look similar to the flame on my map gas porch. Yeah, the flame that was in there, it wasn't blue for sure. It was like uh, red. Big stack uses... 11 to 13 PSI from the propane tank. So I had that thing cranked up to 30. But I know his um, he has one of those devil forges. It probably has a better burner. Mm -hmm. This thing is like super basic looking. It's just a, a piece of brass with a hole drilled in the side. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not sure how well... Um,
mini me of a devil's forge yeah i think this is the the retarded version of a devil's forge <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to send this thing to the special olympics or something um i don't i don't, I don't know about this thing but I, like i said i'm gonna try um maybe that burner needs some tweaking because even when i cranked it up to 30 it didn't seem like there was much of a difference between 15 psi and 30 psi let me get this out of here we're done with that um so um any suggestions? I'll have to go back and read the chat. I, I can't see this chat while uh, while I'm like here. It's hard for me to keep up with everything. Yeah, um, I was trying to tell leave, you. But... Leave some. Um, oh, I can hear you now. Leave leave some um, comments below, suggestions in the comment section of this video once it posts. That way, um, I can go through and take a look at them and. And see if there's something we can do different or tweak. Um, who knows if that regulator is actually pumping out 30? It did. It does have a gauge after the regulator, so you know, I, I don't know. And just the thought, it might have been operator error. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not doubting that at all. <laughs> you know, I kind of just threw it together and sent it, um, and just breezed through the instruction book. So I'll probably make another video on this, um, you know, but there's really nothing there. Like how much you got your gas, you set it at a certain thing, you open your valve and maybe I just didn't let it go long enough, you know, but it seemed like it was on there for like what, 30, 40 minutes. And someone did mention that um, it, it would take uh, 30 minutes to an hour to melt which seems like a ridiculously long time and probably burn a ton of gas. I probably should have weighed that propane tank before. Um, maybe I can adjust the flame on the burner outside the furnace. Shannon, if you, um, if you email me, I will give you my uh, Montana address. I have a mailbox in Montana that I pick up stuff. So instructions are for quitters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just try and save up and buy a big stack forge. I'm going to put money into one. I'm just going to build one that's bigger. I've seen, I seen his forge. I don't think it's big enough for what I plan on doing. You know, he, he melts bars and coins. I'm trying to melt something big. And, and produce a lot of stuff at once, you know. Um, I want to be able to melt, like, the equivalent to a five-gallon bucket, which in uh, when I used to chop copper, I used to get 180 pounds of chops in a five-gallon bucket. So I want to be able to do something on that scale, which I have that oil, uh, the incinerator. That's big enough. To where I could probably melt a ten gallon. You know, yeah, that would be something cool. big. Shit. You know, I'm gonna have to get a, a gantry with a uh, you know a chain hoist to pull it out of there and and a rotator to to dump it. But we want to be, um, you know, I said years ago, one day when I start mounting copper, I'm gonna make the biggest ingot on YouTube, and I'm not bullshitting. I'm gonna I'm gonna make the biggest ingot. And I'm going to put it on that milling machine and it's going to be the coolest looking ingot you've ever seen. Um, you know, yeah, I, I, I could see, you know, I want a hundred pounds or more, you know, <laughs> something, <laughs> something monstrous. Uh, but then even like the smaller ingots, I'll make a couple small ones and, and we'll give them away. Mm -hmm. Big stack got a massive furnace made he he made it himself or someone made it for him that's interesting yeah go big or go home man that's what i'm talking about now originally you know with that kiln 
Um, I was hoping that I could melt copper with that. I'm, I'm not done with that yet. As soon as I can find where to buy the coils, um, there's a certain coil that'll bring it up to a different temperature. Um, for smaller stuff, that would be um, cool. But I was even thinking about, you know, for a rapid melting, maybe do a combination of both. Get that thing fired up with the electric and then hit the burner on it. Um, the Devil's Forge was made for him. So that's like his own product. Well, I've seen Devil's Forge on Amazon and stuff. Huh. Yeah, but is that his? I know on his videos it says big stack on the forge itself. Do they okay. all come like that or is it just his? I have no idea. Huh. That's interesting. He has two propane tank inputs. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I might need four. Product placement. <laughs> Hi, that's um, great. All right, so we're right at about two hours. Um, I'm going to wrap this up. Unfortunately, we didn't get the melt copper today. We did burn it and, um, you know, make it look kind of crusty. We turned it purple. Yeah. It did get hot and it looked like it was, like the one guy said, it looked like it was going to sweat. It was right at that point where it was looking like it was sweating. But the weird thing is, I would have thought the little tiny strands would have melted before them big chunks. So that's just telling me right there, we weren't we weren't nowhere near hot enough. Or right. it just wasn't, it wasn't in there long enough. Um, so I think it was in there long enough. I think it didn't get hot enough. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. We gotta, we gotta figure out what the, what the, uh, thing is. I'm going to look into this burner too. Um, you know, I'm, like I'm the guy said, about the nitrous oxide though. Yeah. <laughs> that I got it. Uh, Steve's got some, um, He's got some uh, small jets that he was going to use on his motor. I think I'm going to tell him to bring them over. <laughs> um, it's going to be brittle now that I burned off the coating. What coating? That was uh, bright and shiny copper I put in there. Huh. All right. Well, um, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, we're going to we're going to definitely explore this again. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit more research. I might just do an update video on the channel to see uh, um, if anyone suggests anything. If I modify this thing that way next time, um, you know, we can actually get something melting. I think I'm going to start off with something a little easier like aluminum. <laughs> so, so even if our temperature is enough to snuff or copper, we might be able to at least get something melted and made. Um, because I do want to, whatever I melt here, like I said, I'm going to put it on the mill and make something. Um, it's just something simple, but I want to send it to someone. So the first thing that I melt, uh, I'm going to figure a way of picking someone that I can just randomly send it to. Right. Um, you know, we'll figure something out with that. Um, but, uh, yeah, on that note, uh, we're going to cut this off and, um, I want to thank everybody that came by the stream, especially the people that donated to the chat. Thank you. Uh, nice junk for stopping by and staying the stream. Uh, thank you uh, for having me on. Yeah. Silverlicious. Thank you for, um, moderating. I really appreciate that. Uh, Shannon, thank you for the shirt. And, um, uh, if you're going to send some more cookies, uh, I greatly appreciate it. And so would Steve. Um, and uh, hey, um, check out Nice Junk's channel. He got a massive uh, generator over there he's doing. Hey, when are you going to have a video on that? I put one out yesterday on part one and part two will be next Saturday. Okay, cool. I'll go check that out, man. And um, everybody go check out his stuff. It's uh, it's pretty impressive the size of that thing. 9,000 um, Nine thousand pounds. Yeah, that's insane, dude. Yeah, done in the driveway. Yeah, that's impressive. <laughs>
So um, again, thank you for the people that um, that donated. I really appreciate that, man. It really helps out, especially with my uh, insane rent. They jack my rent up like seven hundred and fifty dollars a month over here, which is uh, insane. They got me for six hundred and fifty last year, and it seems like every year they just there's like no end to it. So I am talking with a uh, a realtor. Um, and we're getting a game plan together for, um, at the end of my lease, I had to sign a new lease here. So I'm kind of locked in unless I want to break my lease. I'm kind of locked in for the next year. Stop and, paying uh, rent. They throw you out. Yeah. But man, I got, they got like thousand dollars of my fucking money that I'd forfeit, you know? Um, so I'd like to at least get that back. I know yeah. it would probably, you know what, if I did leave, I'd probably save that eight grand in two months <laughs> of not being here. But the problem is I got to find somewhere to go. You know, it's a, it's a huge undertaking to move this amount of stuff and all, you know, finding a, a place that would fit everything, you know? So it's, me and my wife are looking for uh, an acreage so we can call it rusty acres and do some real scrapping. Yeah, there you go. Oh man. If I had, <laughs> If I had land with some acres, I could just imagine the shit that I'd have there. <laughs> I I turn away, like I turn down so much stuff. Um, one, because a lot of it's like steel. I get a lot of referrals for picking up steel. <clears throat> and, you know, maybe now that I, I got this, uh, uh, a better hookup on the on uh, selling steel and, and other stuff, copper. He gave me a really good price on copper, too. Um Maybe I'll start picking up more steel. I don't know. I um, to I'm gonna have to save up some money, at, you know, like probably thirty or forty grand for a deposit or something like that. On a, uh, you know, they want twenty percent, and down here everything is expensive. I'm not gonna find anything that's gonna be the size that I need for under, you know, unless it's like a vacant lot that needs to be cleared. They're probably still two hundred thousand dollars. So yeah. just for a vacant lot, I'm going to need to pump out 40 grand, you yeah. know, and then have to spend the time and money to build something clear and build it, which I wouldn't mind doing. I actually like to build my own thing and, um, you know, make some videos on it. Uh, right. I, li I like that stuff, man. So, so we have uh, house moving companies here and a lot of times they have shops that they have no place to move to. So they sell them for like dirt cheap. Oh, they'll come just pick up the whole building and move it. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. You know, when I was a kid, my neighbor actually had a business moving houses. Which so is, check uh, them out. Check those guys out. Sometimes they have abandoned buildings. I don't know. If, I haven't seen anything like that in South Florida, man. Um, but yeah, I got. Um, I'm definitely um, keeping my eye open for anything, but uh, I'm gonna have to start hustling. Uh, so that at the end of the year, I'll be ready to get out of this place and then moving to something more permanent because it's been 13 years since I've been working for myself and I've always rented a warehouse. Mm. Other than right after during COVID, I worked from home for a while, but that only lasted like a year or something. And then uh, we got in trouble for having too much stuff in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> west palm beach isn't too uh keen on that you got to go out west i was kind of in the wrong neighborhood for that right um you know so well i'm cheap so i won't rent you won't rent no i'm I cheap i don't blame you dude i mean ultimately like i used to um it was a rental but i rented a house one time that i could work out of out in loxahatchee um, but the damn lady that I was renting from, she wound up going in the foreclosure and was just taking my money. So I moved in there and then within a year I had to move out and it, it really kind of messed me up and put me in a bad spot. But, um, you know, cause it costs a lot of money to move, man. Right. Especially, you know, you got to rent an apartment and then rent a shop. So now you have all the security deposits for both of those. You got two electric bills, you got two. You got internet now. You got two internet bills. It, it's, it's, it's a lot, and especially mm -hmm. like for me. Uh, since COVID, I've been kind of like on a part time gig. You know, I don't have full time work. Right. Uh, it, so imagine trying to pay like 
six, seven thousand dollars a month in bills on a part time job. Yeah. <laughs> so luckily I, I uh I do start I am starting to make a little money from YouTube, so that definitely helps. I appreciate all you guys um that watch and subscribe and comment. Um, you know, uh, because that definitely helps. And this year, at the beginning of this year, I told myself that um, you know, I'm like officially a YouTuber. So I'm going to make that a big part of what I'm doing. So that's going to be bringing better content, bringing more videos. Um, and um, I, I was just talking with my editor about some things. So we're going to, we're going to be stepping it up a notch over here. Hopefully mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to have to uh, work a lot more and sleep less. <laughs> yeah. As soon as I'm through this shit that I've got, I'm on to bigger and better projects. Um, I'm done with the small shit. Yeah. Well, that's one reason why I, I um, I'm, I'm trying to finish this stator record because I want to ultimately be a processor. Like I want to years ago, I used to buy from the scrap yards transformers when there was a lot of them. There's not so many now that it's like, um, it's just not like it was before the last right. five years. I've seen such a decline on the transformers that it's like, I'm really looking into something else. And if I can finish this machine and then there's two other machines that are going to go along with it, um, that are going to be able to make me be able to break down electric motors and AC compressors in minutes. Right. You know, it took me and Steve probably about two hours to break down that big motor. Um, and we were, we were messing around, you know, fumbling around, you know, just trying to figure it out, but a streamlined, if I had everything done the way I envision it and the way that I've seen certain equipment do it, I could have had that broke down in 15 minutes or less, 10, you know, maybe even 10 minutes from start to finish right? Uh, with the right equipment. And then it would have been profitable. And then that machine, like, a lot of people were saying I paid too much. Well, I had to pay what I paid because that's what the scrapyard paid for it. You know, I bought it three prices down yeah. the way. It's not like I bought it from the source. And a lot of people made a comment that some scrapyards on those big motors, they pay even less than the small motors, which makes sense because the recovery is just not there. Right. And if they know for a fact that there's going to be aluminum in the middle, um, that makes a lot of sense, you know, not, not paying a lot. Um, so like that one I'm doing, it's all copper inside. Like, well, that's a generator, man. And that's the way those big generators I had in here. And I actually have two smaller ones sitting over here right now. I'll probably, I'll probably, when I'm done this, I'm going to make a video of me, uh, uh with that plasma cutter they sent me. I'm going to see if that thing, does any better than this uh, Chinese furnace over here. Um, but we're going to cut up some staters. And I think I have an AC compressor here. We'll cut up just to put that thing through its paces. Um, but those are always copper. You know, I haven't come across one um, generator stator that was aluminum right. or had an aluminum core. They all have copper um, staters and the rotors are copper. So, so I only paid two hundred and twenty dollars Canadian for that thing. Holy shit, man! How did you do that? The auction. Oh, okay. So you didn't buy it from a scrapyard. No. Okay. Um, Gone too cheap. Damn, man. Yeah, I gotta find out the source of those big motors. Like, where do they even come from? You well, know, see, we're, and, we're right in the middle of oil country. So a lot of that oh. shit from the oil field. There you go. I don't think we have any oil down here in South Florida. We got a lot of um, cane fields, I know. Sugar cane? Right. I don't know what them guys have out there for electric motors, but or generators or how they're powering their stuff. But, but you're on one the thing in their ships. Yeah, we have a lot of ports down here. But one thing South Florida does have is a shitload of generators because of the hurricanes. Mm -hmm. All the all the buildings, any big building down here has massive generators on them, you know. And right. I've gotten a bunch of them. 
Um, so we're going to, we're going to be hitting that hard here. Um, I got to get the cracker and a splitter set up. And then I actually have, you know, the small splitter that I've paid 500. It's like a real deal stator splitter from a company that makes stator splitters. It's their replacement blade. It was like 500 bucks. I'm going to replicate that on a much larger scale. You know, if you see my channel, I actually made one for Romatic years ago. Right. Out of just out of mild steel and it worked great. Right. Um, so I have a plan to make, um, I have a little bit better grade steel, but I have a way of, I'm going to take some, uh, welding rod, hard face welding rod, and I'm going to harden the edge with weld and then grind the blade profile into it. Um, but it's going to be massive, man. It's going to be able to split the big, the big boys in half. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But unfortunately, I had a huge setback even with that. Um, I had all the steel. I saved it up for like a year, getting pieces from here and here and there. And then all that steel wound up coming missing, uh, unfortunately. So we like had to restart, uh, which really sucks. But hey, we're here for it. We're going to uh, we're going to get something going on it and, um, you know, bring you guys some really cool content. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. All right, man, I'm going to get out of here. And um, like I said, I appreciate everybody that stopped by. Uh, nice junk. Thank you. And um, we'll uh, see you on the next one. Yeah. And thank you guys for taking me, taking me in and subscribing. You're awesome. Yeah. Go subscribe, man. Go check out that big stator he's working on. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, boss.